What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our 14th example video following our course on differential equations. Now, today's video is going to be on the variation of parameters. So with our intro out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our definitions. Okay, so our goal for today's video is to solve equations of the form p0 of x times y double prime plus p1 of x times y prime plus p2 of x times y is equal to f of x, where f of x is some forcing function. In our past videos, we did more specific examples, but this is a much more general way to solve these types of problems. So generally speaking, for these types of problems, we will either be given a fundamental set of solutions to the complementary equation, or there will be a simple method in which to find it. But if we do know a fundamental set of solutions, y1, y2, of the complementary equation, our particular solution will be given by yp is equal to z1, y1, plus z2, y2. And our general solution will be given by y equals uh, our particular solution plus c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2. Now the way I'm going to go about solving these types of problems is I'm going to create a system of equations using our particular solution definition there and the definition of something being a solution to the complementary equation. And that will allow me to solve for our z1 and z2, which we will use to solve for our particular solution, which can give us our general solution. So let's go ahead and get into our first problem. So number one says, find the general solution for the following equation. We have x squared times y double prime minus 2xy prime plus 2y is equal to x to the 9 halves power. And we're given the set of solutions y1 equals x and y2 equals x squared. So in this problem, we're given the complementary set of solutions. And in all the problems I'm going to do today, we will be given the set of solutions just to make it easier. So since we have these solutions, we are going to write out our definition for our particular solution. So we have y sub p is equal to y1, which is just x times z1, plus y2, which is x squared, times z2. And from here, we can set up our system of equations. So we know that z1 prime y1 plus z2 prime y2 is going to be equal to 0. And we will also know that z1 prime y1 prime plus z2 prime y2 prime is equal to our forcing function f of x, which in this case is our x to the 9 halves, divided by the coefficient of our y double prime term here. And this is by a theorem that is in the lecture video. So that'll be equal to f of x over p0 of x. So let's go ahead and write out these two equations for this specific problem. So we will have z sub 1 prime times y1, which is x, plus z sub 2 prime times y2, which is x squared, is equal to 0. And then we will have, for our second equation, z sub 1 prime times y1 prime, but that is just 1, so I'll write that as times 1, so you can see that we have taken the derivative of x there. Then we'll have plus z2 prime times the derivative of x squared, which is just 2x, and that's going to be equal to our forcing function, which for this problem is x uh, to the 9 halves, so we'll have x to the 9 halves over x squared. So right away we can see we can rewrite this first equation to set up a substitution, which will hopefully help us solve for our z1 and z2. So right away we can see this first equation sets us up for a wonderful substitution into our second equation. So we can move this stuff around to get the following relationship. We will have z1 prime x is equal to negative z2 prime x squared. And if we divide by x there, we will have solved for z1 prime. So we'll have z1 prime is equal to negative z2 prime times x. And we will use this to substitute into our second equation. But before we do that, let's go ahead and simplify our second equation. So that z1 prime times 1 will obviously just be z1 prime. Then we'll have a plus 2x z2 prime and x to the 9 halves over x squared. Well, we are going to subtract 4 halves from that, so we will have is equal to x to the 5 halves on the right-hand side. So making the substitution here, we will have negative z2 prime x plus 2x z2 prime is equal to x to the 5 halves. We can see that this negative z2 prime x is going to cancel one of these z2 primes, and we will be left with x z2 prime is equal to x to the 5 halves. Then we can divide that x over and take an antiderivative to solve for our z2. So dividing by x will give us z2 prime is equal to x to the 3 halves. And we can now take the antiderivative of both sides there to solve for our z2, as I said before. So on the left-hand side, we will obviously have z2. And then we need to take the antiderivative of x to the 3 halves. And that is 2 over 5 times x to the 5 halves. 
So from here, we're going to use this relationship up here to substitute in for our uh, z1 prime. So if you recall, our z1 prime is equal to negative this left-hand side of this equation here. So that means we can substitute negative x to the 5 halves into our equation for z1 prime. So we will have z1 prime is equal to negative x to the 5 halves. We can take the antiderivative once more, and that will give us z1 is equal to negative 2 over 7 times x to the 7 halves. So now that we have that z1 and z2, we have our particular solution for this problem. So we have y sub p is equal to our z1, negative 2 over 7, x to the 7 halves, times our y1, which is just x, plus 2 over 5 times x to the 5 halves, times our y2, which is just x squared, which simplifies to 4 over 35 x to the 9 halves. So by our formula for our general solution, that means we are going to have y is equal to, we have our particular solution, which is 4 over 35 times x to the 9 halves, plus c1 times our y1, which is x, plus c2 times our y2, which is x squared, which finishes this problem off. So let's get into our second problem. Okay, so number two says, find the particular solution for the following equation. We have x minus 1 times y double prime minus xy prime plus y is equal to the quantity x minus 1 squared, and we are given the solution set y1 equals x and y2 equals e to the x. So we know that our particular solution is given by z1 times our y1, which is x, plus z2 times our y2, which is e to the x, and we can set up our system of equations from here. So we will have z1 prime times x plus z2 prime times e to the x is equal to zero, as well as z1 prime times our derivative of x, which is just one, plus z2 prime times the derivative of e to the x, but that is just e to the x. And that is going to be equal to the right-hand side of our original equation, which is x minus one quantity squared over the coefficient of our y double prime term, which is also x minus one. So this x minus one in the denominator will cancel out our squared in the numerator. And from here, we can solve our system of equations. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this equation one and this equation two. And we are going to subtract equation one from equation two. So two minus one there. So when we subtract the equations like this, our z2s will cancel out and we will be left with z1 prime minus z1 prime times x is equal to x minus one. And we can factor out a negative z1 prime here to get negative z1 prime times x minus one is equal to x minus one, which we can see very easily means that z1 prime is equal to negative one. And from there, we can see that that means that z1 is equal to negative x. So substituting that into our first equation here, we will have that negative x plus z2 prime e to the x is equal to zero, which means that z2 prime is equal to x times e to the negative x. And we can take the antiderivative of both sides there to solve for our z2. And once we do that, we will see that z2 is equal to, we will have negative x e to the negative x plus e to the negative x. So let's go ahead and make those substitutions into our particular solution and solve. So that means our y sub p will be negative x times x because x is our y1, so we'll have negative x squared. Then we will have plus our z2 times our y2, while our z2 is negative x e to the negative x plus e to the negative x, and our y2 is e to the x. So we can see that when we distribute this e to the x, these e to the minus x's are going to cancel out. We will be left with negative x squared minus x plus one for our particular solution to this differential equation. Now, it's very easy from here to write out our general solution, but this problem only asks for the particular solution, so we are going to go ahead and move on to our third and final problem. So for number three, you're going to try and find the particular solution for this differential equation, which is given by x times y double prime plus the quantity two minus two x times y prime plus the quantity x minus two y is equal to e to the two x. Once again, we are going to write out our definition for our particular solution, which is y sub p is equal to z one times our y sub one, which is e to the x, plus z2 times our y sub 2, which is e to the x over x. 
Then we'll set up our system of equations. We will have z1 prime times y1, which is e to the x, plus z2 prime times e to the x over x is equal to zero. And then we will have z1 prime times the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x, plus z2 prime times the derivative of e to the x over x, which is equal to e to the x times x minus one, all over x squared. Then the right-hand side of the second equation is going to be equal to e to the two x over the coefficient of our y double prime term, which is just x. So from here, we can subtract equation one from equation two, which will cancel out our z1 terms. And when we do that, we will get z2 prime times e to the x times x minus one over x squared minus z2 prime times e to the x over x. And that will be equal to e to the two x over x. So we're gonna go ahead and distribute on this first term to separate it up into two different terms. So when we do that, we will be left with z2 prime e to the x over x minus z2 prime e to the x over x squared. Then lastly, minus z2 prime e to the x over x is equal to e to the two x over x. And we can see that these two things are going to cancel, which will leave us with negative z2 prime e to the x over x squared is equal to e to the two x over x. We can multiply through by that x squared to cancel out the x in the denominator and put an x up here. And then we can divide by this e to the x to cancel that e to the two x down to just an e to the x. And that will leave us with z2 prime is equal to negative x times e to the x. And from here, we can take our antiderivative to solve for our z2 prime. And once we do that, we will find that z2 is equal to negative x e to the x plus e to the x. Okay, good. So now we are going to substitute this value for z2 prime into our first equation, which if you recall was z1 prime times e to the x plus uh, our z2 prime, which is negative x e to the x, and that's times our y2, which was e to the x over x, which is equal to zero. Now right away we can see that these x's will cancel out and this, these two e to the x terms are going to double up. So we will have z1 prime e to the x minus e to the two x is equal to zero. And once we move that e to the two x over and divide by e to the x off of our z1 prime, we will be left with z1 prime is equal to e to the x, which of course means that z1 is equal to e to the x as well. So from here, all we have to do is substitute that into our formula for our particular solution, y sub p, which is going to be equal to our z1, which is e to the x, times our y1, which is also e to the x, plus our z2, which is negative x e to the x, plus e to the x, times our y sub 2, which is e to the x over x. And I'm not going to take the time to simplify that, but once you do, you should get y sub p is equal to e to the 2x over x for your final solution for this particular solution to this differential equation. And I think that's a good place to stop.